The following is a clip from a live episode of NYY Recaps. Enjoy. It is trade deadline season. We are less than 48 hours away. So I want to talk about trades from an alternate perspective. Not who they're going to pick up. We've talked ad nauseum about who the Yankees could trade for. But I want to talk about some players that could be involved in what I call baseball trades, where another team is looking to pick somebody up, and the Yankees have a few pieces. So there's four guys that I want to talk about. We're going to start with Verdugo. Then we're going to talk about Nestor Cortez, Glaber Torres, and Clay Holmes. So let's start with Verdugo, 238 hitter this year. He got off to a great start. He's been great defensively overall. He had that one play in Baltimore that just kills me. I played on repeat in my head like every day. But, um, you know, he's begun to heat back up. He had a couple of doubles tonight. He is now um, 670 OPS, which is not great. It's below average. But you got Dominguez in the minor leagues coming back soon. You know, if you want to play Jazz in center, you can put Judge in left and save his wheels a little bit. I think there's a deal to be made for Verdugo. What are your thoughts on on Alex Verdugo? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, at the beginning of the season, it's funny. When we got him, I was like, he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. So he was one of those guys where, like, if we were out of it, definitely deal him, right? And it was an easy contract to move. But uh, with him, I saw this funny tweet. Somebody was like, uh, Verdugo saw Jason hitting in the minor leagues and decided to be good again because of that. Yeah. Like he's got a, yes. kind of got the, kind of got the fire lit up a little uh, underneath him, right? So, but the Jazz move just because Jazz can play outfield, and if you can play center, you can play any outfield position. Let's just yes. be clear about that. So he can slide into left field at Yankee Stadium. So just because of that move, he is definitely tradable now. It's not like there is a necessary a need for Verdugo, especially since Jazz is also a lefty. And that would open a spot for the Martian if you want to go in that direction. So I'm really not opposed to it for the right for the right price. If you're going to trade an Alex Verdugo and get, I don't know why the Marlins would do this, like a Tanner Scott back, you would have to add stuff to that deal. But I'm just speaking well, out of school here. It doesn't open the door for the Martian if you're playing him in the outfield. You have to play him at second base to open the door for the margin because you know no, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying if you put Jazz at second and you trade Verdugo that opens the outfield right. spot. Oh, oh yeah. okay. I thought you were saying play Jazz out there no, and no, left no, no. which he can't. Yeah. So it, like if you're going to move Verdugo, you put Jazz at second and you're moving Gla- you, there's a lot of moving parts to this, but Glaber would have to be dealt, Verdugo would have to be dealt, maybe in a package together which is weird because those are both expiring contracts. Put Jazz at second, put Jason in in center there and maybe you want to maneuver it that way, but if you want to move a Verdugo and a Torres for some relief arms because they need it, then, yeah, yeah, I'm not opposed to it just because Jason is right there and Jazz can play infield or outfield. So it has a little versatility. The the roster is flexible now with that move. So Nestor Cortez, uh, he started off okay. Actually, he started off bad, but then he pitched okay for a while. Uh, He looks like he's out of gas to me, but then again, so did Luis Heal a few weeks ago. So it might just be a midseason funk, but he is over his innings, you know, what we thought he would throw. Uh, what are your thoughts on trading Nestor Cortez? I, I would have no issue with somebody like you, Andres Gomez, filling in for Nestor Cortez for a couple of weeks or a month or whatever it is until Clark Schmidt is back, especially now that you got Garrett Cole back in the rotation too. Yeah. So I'd have no issue with that. You think the Yankees could move Cortez? Again, depends on what you're getting back for him. Um, you think uh, – how far away is Poteet? Do you know? He's coming back. I, I know he's rehabbing – I know somebody had a setback, but I don't. I don't know if it was him or not. I don't think it was him. So he could be yeah. back anytime. Yeah, I have no problem. I, I like what I've seen from Poteet. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and I guess you could kind of do what the Mets did with Buto, where they put him out in the bullpen, and he's been lights out there. So you maybe you want to put Nestor in the bullpen. Would that be something you want to mull over there rather than trading him? I don't hate it, but I don't think they would do that right now. I mean. I, I think no, he's, I don't think they would he's, do it. This is the Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe when Schmidt comes back, you move him to the bullpen, and that solves one of your left-handed reliever problems, and it keeps him kind of fresh, you know, give him a chance to rest. Yeah. It seems like most years he goes on the I.L. with some kind of like a, a groin issue that would normally take six yeah. weeks, but he's magically back in two weeks because it's a phantom trip. So let's talk about Glaber Torres, though. He's beginning to heat up after a very bad first three months. We just talked about some possible landing spots. Would you keep him or would you dump him? I've been very vocal about this that, and especially with jazz, it changes everything. Move him, move him. Now Uh, you're not going to re-sign him. You have jazz for two more years. Jazz can play second base. Jazz is actually a better. I heard you, you were um, 
you're interviewing your body. Your what was it, Scott, off of uh, Scott Brown. territory? Yeah, yep. yeah. And he was saying how Jazz is a better second baseman than he is an outfielder defensively. So honestly, what's the point if you're not <laughs> re-signing labor? Jazz is going to be your second baseman probably for the next two years. That's the direction I would go in because you're trying to sign Soto back. You got Jones and Jason coming through the minor leagues. So what's the point of holding on to Glaber? If you can get an arm for him, yeah, definitely move him. I'm I'm fully in the move on from Glaber Torres Bow. I know that he's heating up, but that's even better for his trade value because I know Cashman can call call up a, a GM and just be like, listen, like look at his history. He goes on these tears right around August, honestly, where he hits like 400. And he's starting to heat up a little bit. I mean, maybe that squeezes a little bit of value out of something where maybe his like the super deep analytic metrics are showing showing uh, other teams something. But I don't know. What do you think, Derek? I think I agree with Kurt Ruppel. Trade Globber. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I love yeah. that. Um, Clay Holmes, another guy that I think the Yankees should at least talk to other teams about because if he's not going to be your closer, I mean, he can – fill in nicely I think as a setup man I still don't want him as a closer and I don't think he will be the closer on Wednesday the question is do you want to keep him in the seventh inning spot or do you want to try and flip him for some value before he becomes a free agent because they're not going to re-sign him either so Clay Holmes keep him or dump him all-star Clay Holmes um, I think hold on to him just because bullpen arms are such a need for the team right now. Um, and also the bullpen market looks really expensive right now. I think acquiring arms is going to be tough at this deadline. So, um, I think probably hold on to him, but yeah, definitely move him out of the closer role. Um, I, he, he's definitely, I've, I've talked to a few people about this, but he's definitely always been more of a seventh, eighth inning guy to me just because he's a ground ball pitcher. I don't like having ground ball pitchers as my closer. I want my closer to come in and just throw straight flames. Like, I don't want you to be able to see the ball. So, yes, he throws very hard, but because of he throws the sinker all the time, it's it's like guys are jamming that ball into the ground. And, yeah, I'd rather seventh or eighth. But for a closer, I don't really know who's out there because Mason Miller's not getting traded. Um, that would have cost a ton too. And I, I was here at the very beginning of the season saying, Emmanuel Classe, please. And then Cleveland yeah. decided to be good. So they're not yeah. moving him. So I don't really know what closer is really on the market to be moved. Tanner Scott and Pete Fairbanks are really the only ones that I can see yeah. right now. Uh, there are some relievers with the Guardians and they need a bat. So, I mean, maybe you can work something out where you exchange like a, you know, an R, a uh, an R for a bat. Yeah. So that could be something. <laughs> yeah. That could be something that we uh, we see. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps other fans find the channel. And YY Recaps is also available on all your favorite podcast platforms. And we'll see you next time.